On this episode of Breakout Boxing Spotlight, we talk to Mark Flames, the human torch as he plans to make his fiery debut and boxing return on Breakout 04 New World Order. After suffering a first round stoppage to Giordani via his own means, he has returned with a brand new mentality, brand new spirit, and looks on to take Intrepid to deep waters. He has mean intentions and he is ready to show why his name is the human torch today on breakout boxing spotlight we talk to mark flames ladies and gentlemen it is once again breakout time and we are here with another episode of breakout boxing spotlight today the spotlight gets very very hot as the fiery human torch mark flames the blaze ceo is here today to not only talk about his fight, but his rise in the scene, as well as what's coming for him down the road. Mark Flames, it is good to see you, my friend. What's up? What's what's up, Pat? What's up? It's good to see you, my friend, here on Breakout. I mean, obviously, you've been a part of Breakout since the beginning. However, it's good to see you finally get in the ring in Breakout Boxing. Let me ask you this first question, okay? Okay. We have a long storied past. We were on Twitter and everything. We had our beef. You know what I mean? Over some Grant gloves. But of course, through some interesting events, you have joined Breakout Boxing. So can you tell us what that journey is like? Joining Breakout Boxing to how we got there, to how we got to here today, fighting Intrepid. So um, how everything started, I remember watching the KSI and two and one night stuff and then i got recommended like because after that and then i watched like the give versus austin mcgroom fright i made a video saying i want to start fighting i think i'm gonna try it out this was back in 2022 i hit the bag a couple of times just to give views because my first instagram reel with me just hitting the bag for the first time ever got so many views and likes it got over like 80 likes in the first like four hours so i was like i'm gonna just hit it here and there at the start, it wasn't really that serious and all that. And then, like, I started making concept posters, and I seen two people, you know, yourself and Waffle fighting. I seen you guys this fight recommended to me. I was like, you know what? It's not like they're going to respond. Let me just call these guys out. And then right away, we got an instant DM from Pat Ty Pluja and Mr. I'll fight anyone. Um, and this was way before, like, the, the pepper fight and all that stuff. You know, we had a little back and forth, but it wasn't anything too crazy where, like, yeah, it wasn't, like, any bad bad blood it was just like we both wanted to fight in general and a lot of things just went in between there and then sooner or later like we just we just i think i asked you for an interview back in like february or, or like january and then like you're like after we watch this fight we could do it and if you want we, you can watch it while we're waiting and all that i'm like okay i'm down and that's when i met lesra so i met like actually you and stuff like that and that's how everything kind of like went and every the rest is history, you know. I joined the team as a graphic designer, which, by the way, like making concept posters. That's all I did. I didn't do too many, but you guys liked them enough to make me be a part of Breakout. So th there you go. What's the Mark Flames? Not only you are a good fucking friend of mine, man. You are an essential part to Breakout Boxing. You know, you are you are one one of part of the heart and soul of it. And we appreciate everything that you do. I think the community does. And obviously, me, Lezra, and the team do as well. But let me ask you a question, Mark. I want to take it back to last June, okay? This shirt I'm wearing, obviously, when I took on the Shogun Grim Reaper, you took on Jordani, okay? And everyone knows what happened in that fight. But why don't you tell the people out in the audience what was going through your brain during that fight? Because I feel like when people hear your perspective hear what happened on the week, obviously coming in six days notice. I feel like people are a little bit understanding of, of what your mentality is going into that fight and how you felt in the ring as well. So um, when this fight was down with, it was like beginning of June whenever Waffle was in talks to fight in Maui, which is the guy that was their fight. Um, I said, I'm gonna be real. I'll say. I'll, I'll be honest. I said it jokingly. Like, Yo, I'll step in because I. That's how. That's how much I believe that Waffle was gonna fight. And then turns out that Tuesday before the fight was announced on that Saturday, he said, "Oh, I got a concussion." Like he checked it, got a concussion. I'm like, 
shit, I guess I got to fight. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to be like, nah, I was just joking and shit like that. I don't want to ruin the fight. Then Maui, you know, said the only person I'll fight is Waffle on that day. So technically he ducked me, but we'll get into that another time. And then they offered me, uh, Mr. Jordani, you know, had a year of experience, but he's been on and off. And he had, from what I've heard from Jose, he said he's, he's never sparred. So that's why I took the fight. I thought it was going to be like a tune up to my tune up. Cause a lot of people at the time when, this is around the time when I got announced for Rogue 2. People was like, oh, he's not going to fight. It's, he's this Fortnite guy. Like, he, he's the graphic designer. He's not going to fight. And I'm like, well, fuck you guys. I'll just I'll just hop in the ring early. When that week was happening, I wasn't even supposed to be at, at that place. Pat was like, yo, you should, like, just come to support your, like, you know, your fighter at the time. And I was like, you know what? I I'll give it a go. So I told them, I told my parents, yo, I'm just going to go watch some fights. You know, one of my signees are fighting. I'll support him, and they, they're fine with it. And then when I accepted the fight, I'll get in more detail about it in my documentary series, which is coming out, like, around June, the pilot episode, and then we're going to have, like, a like a fight week, like, each episode and all that. But realistically, I never told my parents that I had a fight. So I was going into it as an easy fight, as a little tune-up, a little, a, little, a little nothing, a little appetizer for September 16th at the time. So then... um. Yeah, you know, I, I hit the bag a few times. I got announced. I said, yo, like, bring in the heat. I never shit talked uh, Jordani. I respected him because he also took the fight short notice. But it was just like, like, I, I'm not going to shit talk someone on short notice. Like, I'm not trying to look like a clown or anything like that. I just I just said how it is, you know. It, it is what it is. We we got there, you know. It, this is my first time flying, too. You guys got to remember that. First time flying, young little 19, 18, 19 year old. Uh, you know, a, a little stricker at the time for my parents. Didn't say anything to, about the fight. Um, when the fight came, you know, did no headgear, sixteen ounce gloves. Don't know why I did that. I'll be real. I just was like YOLO. Like if I'm if I'm gonna get hit, I want to get hit with something to know what do I gotta improve on. You know, got beaten up. I'll be real. I got beaten up. I got I got I got like maybe two highlights max. But like you know, I got pieced up. I'll be real. And then I was like, you know what? I don't think it'd be a smart idea. If my parents don't know I'm fighting, I don't think it's a smart idea to come home with like a black guy or something. They'll never let me fly. And I was strict back then. So I was like, you know what? If I keep getting beat up, I'm good. Then I got dropped. I was like, you know what? Hell no. I'm going to keep going. Then I got beat up. I was like, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Just call it a day. No scratches, no nothing. We were good. I called them saying, yo, like I had a fight. I filled in. I lost, but like, I'm not hurt. I'm not. Nothing's broken, nothing's bruised, nothing's bleeding. I'm good. And they were like, we're not mad that you took it. We're just mad you didn't tell us. So now, like, we are, uh, they're more supportive about it. So there's no reason to quit and all that. Absolutely, Mark. And honestly, I commend you for what you did, my friend. You came on on six mm -hmm. days notice. You flew for the first time. It was the first time we met, which was actually crazy as well. But you mentioned something when you were talking about your experience fighting Jordani and flying to Massachusetts about a documentary series, can you tell the people a little bit about what this documentary series is going to be and what they can expect from it? Just a little bit, because I know you want to save a lot for the actual documentary series. I just feel like people would want to hear about that. 100%. Um, Right now, we're just like getting you know the logo made up and all that stuff, but um, it's going to be called Round 2. So basically, I never made it past the second round. So we're gonna name it round two with Mark Plains or just round two. Still have still work in progress. Um basically I'm gonna highlight the main things going in that fight, exactly how I felt and all that stuff going into that fight in the pilot episode. And then we're gonna we're gonna have like a fight week, like each day, like me traveling to fight week and stuff like that. Um and then like just each day, like kind of like a like a you know, like the extra series on misfits, kind of like yeah. that, but just me. That's going to be awesome, Mark. I think a lot of people are going to be be very excited to see that. I know I will, too. I know I've been a part of your journey in some situations, but I think it's going to be awesome for the people to hear that. You said something in your previous face-to-face uh, -face that you were unsure about fighting after the Jordani fight. Of course, you did not um, make it to fight for O2. You were there. You were on commentary, which was awesome. You got an iconic moment from that, as everybody knows. But now it's over. It's it over. Is. It's it's not over. Well, the right. first round. Oh, sorry, my bad. It's not over. But 
you're back to fight in Trepping, okay? How mm -hmm. do you feel about your opponent? Because I know that there is an opponent in mind that you had, and maybe you could send <laughs> a message to him right now. But Intrepid, you seem very motivated by this pick. You seem very happy with this, this fight, and I'm very excited for you. But maybe you could tell the fans why the pivot was good and who actually you pivoted from. Uh, so originally, we wanted Mando Millions. I've said that from after I we, we tried to do it on L3. Didn't work out. We tried to... I'll, I'll leak it. Uh, We tried to get Potent Frog, but I, I won't say the reason why we didn't get that fight locked in or all that. That was supposed to be my first fight in Cruiserweight. I was going to lose a good amount of weight for o, for uh O four to fight a uh, potent frog. That was that was the plan. Um but that didn't go through due to his situation. I won't speak on that. Um then it was Mando Millions. We thought that fight makes sense. He was shit talking me straight after calling me the punching bag, calling me the Joe Well Weller of the small creator scene. It made sense. You know, we still shit talk back and forth and it's entertaining. We we want to see that guy to shut the fuck up. I thought I'd be the guy to do that. Um but like he apparently he had like some like uh I don't even know like some dream con and the last time I ever heard a dream he's he's talking to kids and all that so I don't know why he's going to that place but uh, it beats me it beats me <laughs> you know what I mean it beats me but uh he can't make it he says he's down to fight me so hopefully uh when I win against Intrepid I'm not looking past Intrepid but like you know we get that fight set up at some point like whether it's on breakout or just anywhere, just get the fight set up just in general. But yeah, um, the pivot of when I got offered in Tripit, I said I'm down right away. You know, it makes sense. So it it I know Mando has a big following, but like it just makes sense because like we both need redemption. We're both 0 and 1. We both lost in the first round. And it just makes sense. So like why why like waste an opportunity and like not make a big fight happen on 04? Cause like, you know. I just want to be on the level where I'm talked about fighting when it comes to fighting, not just graphics or whatever. Like, you know, Lesnar's talking, Lesnar gets talked about in every aspect. You know, he's a funny shit talker. He's a fighter. He, he tweets a lot. You know, like, I just want to be talked about more on that caliber. caliber. So I think this fight after it's done, it's going to won't be around that level. I won't be, I won't be as good as your mother's favorite, but I'll definitely be pretty close, pretty close. Well, your mother's favorite is one of a kind, but Mark Flames, you are also one of a kind. So it's very possible Thanks. for you to be among all the big guys. I, I genuinely think you are right now just because of your contributions to the scene. But for your own personal sake, I know that own personal journey that you're trying to have. But there's also some other things going into this fight. Obviously, you're fighting Intrepid, but there's also a lot in the future for you. Past boxing, past all this. Um, what can we expect from the future of Mark Flames, maybe content-wise? Um, you know, you did re recently reach 1,000 subscribers, so some congratulations to you. You're a streamer. You, you do a lot you. of content. So is there anything new we can expect from you outside this documentary, maybe after the fight, before the fight? Because you're one of our content creators on the card consistently. So I want maybe let the uh, your YouTube audience know what's going on. I I do, after my fight, I do want to focus on streaming a lot more. Because, like, I, I've, I've finally, like, started multi-streaming, meaning I could go on live on other platforms. And I think it's been doing good growing. But I'm not doing it consistently due to me having a fight. So, um, after this fight, I definitely want to focus a little bit on streaming. Maybe get a schedule down and, like, still have time to train. Because after my fight, I do want to maybe take, like, a week off and then get back into training right away. Just in case I possibly might have a fight on another card. Um, yeah, just stream, you know, try to get content that I want to put out, not because I have to put it out. And I've been doing great with that. I'm just posting my reactions to like fights and people are actually liking it. And, you know, we're hopefully to get some gaming content mixed into it too. So that way, you know, people like anything I do. Like I could just, I could, you know, I'm sorry. I could twerk butt booty naked. I want to get views on that. I'm going to keep it real. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I'm trying to get to that point with, with YouTube, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like divine, could, like I'll say divine, for example, he could do whatever he wants. People will watch it. I'm trying to get, do that on YouTube and all that stuff. Like that man, that man could make gaming contents entertaining. That dude could make songs entertaining. That dude could shit talk misfits. Cause they don't know how to, you know, like announce a, a card, you know, he could they do don't, anything, bro. they don't, they don't know how they do not know how to announce these cards, man. It's always way too late. 
But um, I have a couple of questions before we get out of here. Um, you yeah. you obviously mentioned you want to keep training and stuff like that. This is like your first core like training camp for a fight because you've never had to have one. Have you noticed any changes just like in your personal life and your mental from consistently training every day? Because I know doing that for the first time, it can be very grueling. It can be a big life change. Have you adjusted well? Like, how's that going? I'm not necessarily talking like skill wise. I'm just talking like personal wise. Like, yeah, I'm feeling good training. I feel like, or or maybe it's on the opposite side. Maybe I'm just like, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, it's very grueling. It's very exhausting. You know, maybe a little bit of both. Bro. Bro, training sucks. I hate training. I'm a fat dude. I want to be fat. And I and like I still am. I'm I'm coming in a fight. I'm trying to be like 220, 225 for this fight. But like, dude, like I just want to sit down and just munch and then sleep. I, I don't want to train, but I have to. This is this is what happens when you have a, a high stakes redemption fight. You've got to train your ass off so I can beat Intrepid. That's that's the plan. And and it's just like Bro, I know he's training hard, and I, definitely the weights of me feeling nervous about this fight has come off since, you know, one fight uh, fell through, and then he pulled out of the Villagen fight. So now he's coming in from a loss, you know, crying in the bathroom. Uh, it's just, like, very – it's more comfortable. Like, I, I'm not even, like – like, I'm still I'm still nervous about it. You, you have to be nervous for the fight. Otherwise, you're not human. But um, he – yeah, man, it's just like with training, it's definitely me. Every day I train and I work my ass off, bro. It just makes me more confident into my uh, ability to beat Intrepid. Like I know I could beat him. I have that engraved in my head. Nothing's stopping me. He could, he could drop me four times. I'll figure out a way to win, or at least like make it to the last belt. You know, I just like, I just don't think he could beat me. I like that's my way. Like, I I've worked too hard, man. I really do. I really do. And I think. He doesn't get that or something because the way he's talking, he's saying it like when he when it goes past the first 40 seconds and you start running, oh, da, 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 da. Like, I feel like he's banking on me underestimated and I have not. I could say that I, I beat him, but that doesn't mean I think he's an easy fight. It's not going to be easy at all. It's, a, it's another competitive fight I'm going back into, but this only this time I have a full training camp. The only footage he's ever seen me fight in was six days notice, no headgear against a guy who has three years of experience who's fighting in the Golden Gloves. And he keeps talking about me comparing fights, but there's a reason. Like, dude, he had a full training camp and lost in 40 seconds. And then he's like, he's his parents are crying to him because he's not being humble. Like, dude, there's so many circumstances we both were into and now we have no excuses, no nothing, and I'm going to beat him. Plain and simple. That's good to hear, Mark Flame. Seems you fired up Human Torch Blaze Promotion CEO. Um, yes, sir. That, that, that's by the title, man. It's fire. Um, but I want to ask you a question. There might be people that are saying, maybe here and there saying, oh, obviously I'm nervous for a fight. They might take that as, as weakness. Do you want to have a message to your doubters who have maybe said that you're going to lose the fight just purely based off your last loss? I mean... Tune in to watch me not fight a guy who's been training longer than me. I mean, technically, Intrepid had more experience, but I'm pretty sure it was because, like, he was depressed or whatever. He just stopped and he got bigger, you know. That's the only reason is he weight gained and all that. That's ain't no disrespect. That's just facts. Um, Just tune in. Watch me fight an influencer because I'm going to show you that, like, there's a huge difference from fighting a fighter, a get-back fighter. And an influencer, and I'm gonna show I'm gonna show you the difference between that, and I'm and I, and I I promise you you ain't gonna see me quit. Tune in. I'm gonna my hand will be raised, and there's nothing poor, not nothing to it. That plain and simple. Like I said, bro, I I'm just coming in to win, and that's it. Not, nothing stopping me. I don't I don't care. Like I really don't. I'm winning. That's that's my goal. I love to hear that, Mark Flames. You honestly just took the last question right out of my mouth. I don't see any other way that this can continue other than seeing you fight Intrepid and seeing the actual fire in that ring July 27th, 2024. And that is right. If the Eventbrite link is available right now, you guys can click it below. If not, tune in to our social media platforms for more updates. Subscribe to Mark Flames. Subscribe to Breakout Boxing. Sir. Subscribe to Breakout Live because if you can't, join us July 27th. July 28th will be our pre-recorded live stream at 1 p.m. Ladies and gentlemen, one shall rise, wait, can I one say shall something fall. Real quick? Can I say, wait, I'm sorry for interrupting. Can I say one thing? 
Absolutely. And Trippet ta Trippet talks about don't blink. And Trippet, I'm blinking. I'm blinking. He's blinking, bro. I'm blinking. I blinked. He's blinking, bro. I, I, I might have missed it. Where's AT not uh, dropping it? Ashley Raxu. Where's it? Where's that at? I blinked. Oh my, my god, phone. Mark. Jeez, Louise. We will see you at the fights. This is the new world order, baby. Hell yeah.